Salcedo here with Miss Now, the It's Girl edition. Welcome back to the channel. I am super stoked right now, guys, because I have the very lovely, the super talented Alex oh. Hudgens. Yeah. Yay. No, stop, stop. No. For reals, you are a boss woman. You went, okay, first of all, I was reading your bio and I was just like so jealous. I was like, <laughs> you got here in LA 2014, ended up working with Black Tree, Complex, Access. You've done so much in such a short amount of time. How did you do it? Oh gosh, that is the question, isn't it? Thank you, that's, that's really kind. Um, you know, I think with hosting, you just kind of develop, I know people say develop your brand and blah, 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 but I think for me, that became very true and I'm super grateful that my career in the hosting world has been very like, it's just me acting like a goober and people have responded. <laughs> Busy hug, and then this is Busy Hudgens. She loves attention. We'll put it that way. Anyway, I mean, I get, there's such a different how-to for everyone, but I would say, just really being myself, as cliche as it sounds, and being prepared when opportunities came. But I've just been really fortunate and blessed to have some like awesome opportunities come through and be like, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> You've landed the dream job that so many girls wanted to and your style of entering, it's so interviewing, it's so like easy and breezy and so chill. Like you seem like best friends with all the celebrities. <laughs> so is that something that you use to stand out or how did you stand out from other hosts? Because we all know, let's face it, there is an influx of hosts here in Los Angeles. Yeah, I would say that's part of it, sure. I think especially in the entertainment news, <laughs> you're gonna have to go. We love you. Uh, in the celebrity world, you just have to remember that these people are just people. I think people forget that. And then not only are they just people, so you don't need to respond to them any differently than you would anybody else, but also they want to be treated like just people. You know, it's hard to not be able to go to the grocery store because people want to take a selfie with you. So I think just for me, it's always about adding value to other people and specifically in the hosting world. Yeah. It's coming at it and being like, this isn't about me. I'm here to make you look good and I'm here to make you feel comfortable. And for me, I guess my style, which I feel even weird saying that cause I really am just acting like the like doofus that I, <laughs> that I am, but it's, it's worked pretty well. And, and it's cool. Cause after you do it for a while, yeah, you start building relationships and then it's like, Oh, you're gonna thumb wrestle me, The Rock, because we've already done it three other times, so why wouldn't you, but yeah. So now, Alex, what I wanna know is, for you, what was the biggest challenge in terms of getting from, you know, moving to LA and then end up getting all the way to access? What was the, some of the biggest challenges that you face in your career? I mean, it's a hustle, just in general. I don't know if that's unique to me, but I think people don't realize that it's not this I'm going to move to LA and like hard eye emoji and it's all just going to work out so well. Like, no, when I, when I first moved my first year as a host, I don't mind being very, very real and talking numbers. My first year in LA as a host, I only made $7,000 total in a year, really longer than a year. And so behind the scenes, you know, I was working as a nanny with multiple families. I was working as a background extra on Scandal. Shout out, Carrie Washington. <laughs> Which is really fun, because eventually I'm interviewing that whole cast, and it was like, remember I used to walk around the White House behind you guys, like, haha. But true, um, the hours, the, you know, people think you can just come out and, oh, I've got some headshots and that's going to be enough. Well, no, you need a demo reel. And a demo reel is not really something that you can just, I mean, you can just walk out and shoot it on the street. But it took me a solid probably 15 months to have a reel that I thought was really high quality. Um, and what's crazy is that is the reel that Access Hollywood ultimately saw much later, like they saw my very first demo reel that should have been, and I look at it now and I'm like, oh, what was I? Wouldn't hire me either, right? <laughs> right, like I wouldn't, but they saw, they did hire me off of that one. And to be honest, we still, I wasn't represented at the time. I didn't have an agent, but because I landed Access, then I ended up signing with WME, so now the best agency in the world. Like it all works together, but I think people forget that behind the scenes, it's a grind. Like it wasn't just 
I'm out here doing this. I was like, no, I got to pay my bills. And it's crazy hours. And then even once you get to the Access Hollywood, you know, sure, I was on camera and on red carpets, but I was a full-time producer up at 4 a.m. every day, working weekends, traveling at the drop of a hat, you know, being in the office from five to one or two or whatever, cutting news pieces and writing and helping edit and doing all this stuff and then going out and doing carpets. So I think the most challenging part was probably uh, maintaining a life, (laughs) having a little balance with the hustle and then also getting very real, especially with other people. I think we, you know, with social media, we have this, wow, her life is so glamorous and not getting caught up in that and knowing that the reality was not very glamorous and kind of getting being willing to be vulnerable and real with people about like I'm so grateful this job is really really cool but listen it's not this that everyone seems to think it is so yeah but I've been so lucky I mean I don't even like to say lucky but I'm gonna say the word grateful like 15 times in this interview but there's just been I mean you said it and I have to appreciate it and recognize it like my this happened really fast for me and I fully recognize that it takes a lot of other people a lot longer. And I don't really think that that's like, I think I'm good at my job. Sure. Yeah. But I also think, and you should own that, you know, you can't be on camera and not think that you are decent at being on camera. But also I recognize that there's just been, there's been so many people in my corner, but there's been so many people that have given me a chance and like, yes, I had to rise to that occasion, but It's just about networking. Hashtag networking. The worst possible thing to do, especially when you're like somewhat antisocial, at least for my case. Uh, Yeah, you know what? What's funny is I'm an introvert fully. Like, there's a reason I live alone. I have a dog. There's a bunch of books over there. Like, I draw energy. All that really means is where do you draw energy from? I draw energy from alone time. Very able to put on the extrovert hat for professional stuff. And I think that's the same thing with networking. You just have to know... Like, I think of it kind of like a game and not in a using people game, but in a like, how do I add value to you? Just in general in life, I'm a firm believer that if we are constantly adding value to other people, I'm not just a believer, I have proof because that's how I live my life. It, It comes back. And I think, yeah, you, you know, with access, I started, I had an interview with them, um, and we kind of started dating. Like, they didn't hire me on the spot because they didn't have a spot for me. But we start the freelancing thing. Because that interim time between that first meeting and them hiring me full time, there was communication happening. There were check-in emails. I write a handwritten thank you note after every interview that I've ever had and have had bosses tell me that's part of what got you the job. Like, that's part of what made you memorable. Yeah. There you go. Yes. There you go. Yes. You never know. Well, see, here's the thing about you that I think is really cool. Like we said, you got to the top with access, right? Every girl's dream to get there. And you did. And now you decided, okay, I'm here, but I want more. And I want to do my own thing. And that's what you did with Hybrid House. I want to know, how did you decide to leave access and go into venture into your own project? And can you tell us a little bit about maybe some of the risk and some of your hopes and desires with this? Yeah. Well, the risk is leaving a salary. <laughs> it wasn't that high of a salary. I'll give you that. That's another thing just to be very real. Cause I know, I think a lot of your audience are people that want to be in entertainment right. news. I think so important to remember you guys that these jobs, it's extremely competitive. There's just not that many of them. And not to say you can't get them, but like, just real talk. You're not going to get paid what the, you know, people of old that were just got to come in and sit straight in the makeup chair and be the talking heads. That doesn't exist anymore. You've got to know how to write. you got to know how to produce. You should know how to edit. If you end up at a show like Access, there are editors, but like, you should know how to do it. Um... Because that's what people don't understand, too. I was a multimedia journalist at Access, which means producer, reporter, editor, not purely just a correspondent. Even the correspondents, it's all just labels, but you got to know how to do everything. 
funny, before we jump into that, I actually have a story that I, I was debating. I was like, should I share this story with her or not? So about two years ago, I was at VidCon. And you know how you mentioned the side hustle. Yeah. I was working as a brand ambassador for Taco Bell. And you were there. Yes, you were there. I saw you covering it for Access. Yeah. And I remember seeing you and I was like, wow. Even as a reporter and, you know, hustling and working the extra job, I saw you and I was like, wow, she is so lucky. She's working at Axis. She made it. She's at the top. I was like, that is so cool. And I remember I wanted to go up to you and say hi, but I was like, ew, I'm not going to say hi to her in my Taco Bell outfit. No. Okay, first of all, I would have been like, where to Taco Bell at? No, because, wait, was it at the like installment where you could yes. make your own? The icy all, thing. All up in that thing. I wanted, I, I was excited about the Slurpee icy thing, but I wanted like food. I love no, Taco Bell. Have food. We were all disappointed <laughs> for Taco Bell. Let me tell you no I love that because it is I think that's very real you we kind of see there are plenty of people in my career that it, you see them and you've been used to seeing them on tv or whatever and you're like that person I'm telling you that person is probably sleeping like three hours and the little bit of encouragement even when you just walk up and say you know hey I really admire your career whatever it is that matters and it counts and people like that kind of thing because it, it's a grind no matter who you are it's it's very much a grind but you know that even at VidCon that's a good example because all those people 2018 we have no excuse not to be making our own content at this point and so it's kind of like like what you're doing right yes. now hey you better work girl but it's great you should be proud of yourself because no outlet because it is so competitive and there are like so few jobs at these you know, big shows that we've been watching forever. Have an audience, have a strong brand, know who you are, have a YouTube channel or online outlet, whatever it is, like you should be, there's no excuse for people not to be cultivating their own thing now. Um, and what's great is you own that. Yes. So maybe you do get the job at Access and you have an incredible time for two years and then you're like, hey, I actually want some other things now you're always going to have this exactly. and it's only going to get bigger because of your you know the more exposure you get the more attention that whatever you're working on no, now. that's that's what I wanted to know with with your project with hybrid yeah. house you know how is that going for you and how is this now like your own baby and how are you making it grow he's my baby <laughs> it's very much my baby I've always wanted to start some kind of company. I've always had an entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial, I should probably know how to say entrepreneur. the word. Entrepreneur. <laughs> entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, but I don't know. I thought, oh, I'll have a cupcake shop someday. Like, I have no, I can't even bake anything. So I don't know what that was. But uh, when I left, it was more of a, I don't know, just knowing that it was time. You have to be in tune with yourself because otherwise you're going to get so burnt out and so crazy in any of these jobs. But I think for me, like my faith is a huge part of my life and really knowing myself very well. So when I set up Hybrid House, I got officially incorporated in April, mid-April. I just kind of knew it was right and I don't exactly know what I'm doing all the time. No one does. Pro tip. No one knows what they're doing. I say that to encourage people to just go for it. So Hybrid House was kind of born. Um, the first phase has been unscripted TV. We've developed, um, I would call myself a development producer or an executive producer. So Hybrid House does not employ videographers and camera guys and lighting guys. and It's smaller than that. What I do is either develop a concept from the ground up. So I own IP, intellectual property. Um, or something else that's already in existence. I see it and approach, if it's host or a brand or whatever, approach them and say, how do we take this to the next level? How do we kind of fill it out? How do we, you know, add value to what you're doing? And then what does your audience really want? And kind of package it and then develop, you know, a pitch deck and then I go and try and sell it so the way that that works for me is what's great my agents at WME rep me as talent but they also both work with production companies so hybrid house kind of got grandfathered in because it's my company so then I develop a show take it to my team and say you know okay I think this should live at Netflix or Nat Geo or wherever get me meetings 
And then I get in the room and then I go sell the TV show. Alex, I got to tell you, being here, sitting with you and you talking about your company has totally been encouraging to me and my company. So I absolutely love this time that we have spent together. Before we go, before I let you go, because I know you're super busy, I just want to do a fun game with you because I know that we always like to know what people's favorite things are. So I want to know your favorite things. So we are going to do Alex's favorite things right now. (laughs) Cool. <laughs> Don't worry. 14 questions. Let's do this. Number one, your biggest fangirl moment. I would say Oprah. One, my very, I was in LA for like two months. I did the SAG Awards. I was at the end of the carpet at the outlet I was at. And she skipped. She did like the first few outlets and then she skipped everybody. And then for some reason she'd come over and answer my question. And I was like, she walked away and I cried. Oh my God. <laughs> it was such a like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Question two, interview you were most nervous for. This sounds like such a like ass thing to say, but again, like everybody's just people. I don't get nervous. What I get is like, if someone is someone that I really respect and like love their body of work, I get very like, I want to do a good job because I want to like honor you, but I don't get nervous and I'm like, (laughs) who is this? Uh, (laughs) Question three, your dream celeb BFF. I mean, I kind of want to be besties with The Rock because I feel like he would just motivate me. I think I'm pretty motivated, but like, have you seen his Instagram? Like, I've seen his Instagram. We could do stuff together and he could get me buff. Like, yeah, we'll just go with The Rock rock for now. Super cool. Uh, Your current obsession current upset reading <laughs> i'm such a nerd but like i finally have time i i really love to read and i hadn't had time to do it for so long and so now i'm going through like multiple books a week Woo! last tv show you binge watch handmaid's tale yes me too oh girl the finale i was like i've got thoughts about this but yeah same handmaid's. fashion icon marco robbie's been killing it yeah. i'm a very like neutrals but kind of androgynous like sharp i'm not a super girly i'm, I'm kind of look like a dude right now <laughs> like we all have our dude like, moment or like or like ooh, any ca- okay this is gonna be weird but like any character that kate blanchett has ever been is kind of this like badass or like a Charlize theron kind of those like leather yeah. pointy blazers black like that's that's my thing i love that yeah your must-have item on a red carpet chapstick you talk so much, your lips, like, literally, you get to this part, you're like, hold on, I can't talk to you because my lips are stuck to my teeth. Sorry, Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> I have to put chapstick on. And I want to be like, can I have some of your chapstick? <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> favorite, <laughs> favorite place you've traveled to? Thailand was amazing. Um, I just got back from France. I went to the Cannes Film Fest and like the food in France. I'm an eater. Listen, I I travel for food. And did you try the snails, the pesto snails? I did not do snails. Snails, those oh, are good. You know, I didn't do that. But like everything I ate, I was walking around with this like a bag, like a baguette, just yeah. gnawing off bread and like rosé in the other hand. Me, it was the macaroon. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Any of it. Dream vacation. Anywhere that I could go and just. I'm a mountains person more than a beach person, but I want to go and just like not take my phone, take a whole suitcase of books, take a significant other, <laughs> and then just like sit in a in a like nice hot tub and read a book and look at the mountains. There you go, dream vacation. Favorite pizza topping? Pineapple. Favorite dessert? Ice cream. Any kind of ice cream. Favorite exercise? Ooh. Hot yoga. Worst exercise. Anything on a treadmill. I would rather die. I just am not here for that. It's pretty boring. The worst. And last question, summer plans. Oh, okay. First of all, I don't know when you're watching this, but it's August. I cannot believe that we're in August. uh, um, My plan is to sell my slate of shows, and I'm almost finished with my new acting reel, so I'm going to be back in the game of, like, seeking representation for that specifically and really trying to do some uh there's a few things that i'm not quite at liberty busy <laughs> you silly girl uh at liberty to discuss but i'm i'm pretty 
pumped about it yeah well alex i'm pumped about this i'm pumped about this episode i'm so excited i feel like super inspired after talking to you no don't worry (laughs) this is gonna be awesome anyways guys this is alex hudgens alex oh really quick social media where can people follow you you can find me at a hudge it's a underscore h-u-d-g-e and across all platforms usually doing something with my pug or something stupid. (laughs) Perfect, perfect. I'm going to drop those links in the comments section below in the description box. Excuse me. But anyways, Alex, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Thank you for everybody who watched. Make sure to leave some comments below. Give this video a like. And if you haven't yet, subscribe. And come back next week for Miss Now, the It Girl edition. Bye.